Hey guys, today we're doing another demonstration. I'm going to show you a very simple way to light a sphere. And this is assuming that our light is coming from the top. So top is gonna be brighter, bottom is gonna be darker. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a pick a pick a color and I'm gonna try to keep this monochromatic simply for ease on all of us. But in future demonstrations, I can show you how to light and shade a sphere. So first thing I do when I'm painting spheres is I often will go ahead and color in the midground, And then I'll use some clean water and blend it out a little bit at the top. And sometimes I'll even leave like a reflection like that. And this is when having a nice flexi bouncy brush can be really good because you can get it to do a lot of your work for you. And adding in a little more color and kind of zhuzhing it around. And then grabbing a little more saturated color, same color, and zhuzhing that as well. And we have already a wet into wet sort of basis for our sphere. So I'm gonna let that dry. So if you notice your color dispersing a little too much, we are using inexpensive cellulose paper and that does tend to have a mind of its own. You can lift out a little bit because we do want room to work. We don't wanna be working with the darkest version of the color. And then using a clean, damp brush, you can always reestablish. There we go. Okay, now we have some of our lighter tones back in there. Okay, so oh, still a little bit wet. Hopefully, hopefully we can do what we need to do without it lifting. That's one of the one of the downsides to cellulose paper. We may not be able to get the color dark enough. So what a lot of people will do is they'll start doing like a crescent moon down at the bottom. What I like to do is I like to do a circle inside and then a crescent moon. And we're leaving this, this is like refracted or reflected lighting. And then sometimes I like to blend it out just a skewch. So we get like that soft shadow rather than the harsh shadow. One of the things I really like about watercolor is that you can kind of tweak things until it looks right to you. So, um, we kind of lost that nice, sharp, defined ball, but now we have more of the mid-tone color, the color of the ball itself. I don't know if I'll be able to get this particular red saturated enough because it's already pretty saturated. I may have to switch to a darker red. But I think you guys can kind of get the picture. Okay, so for our final color, I am going to switch. I know I said I wouldn't, but I'm going to. I'm going to switch to a darker red and mix that in. Let's see if I can get it dark enough. That'll work, I hope. since I, I had to blend that out and I lost my nice delineation. But I did gain more of the color I was looking for, the mass tone color I wanted. So, kind of a lose-win situation. Anyway, that is a basic method to on how to paint something spherical. Um, I also have a video on painting cubic shapes 
And coming up, I'll show you how to paint a cone and a cylinder. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope these videos are making painting a little more accessible, a little more exciting for you guys. And I hope to see you guys again really soon. If you're looking for more watercolor tutorials, you can check out the rest of my channel. And you can check out my watercolor basic series over at natosoup.blogspot.com. Bye, guys!